This video covers how to model daylight dimming for energy savings within the virtual environment. Modeling daylight harvesting is going to be a two-step process. First, we'll have to determine the daylight levels in each of the zones. Second, we'll modify our artificial lighting to be able to dim in response to those simulated daylight levels. To begin my daylight simulation, I'm going to use the Radiance IES module found in the lighting sections of the Applications tab. Within Radiance IES, I'm going to start on the Surface Properties tab. Although I have previously defined my glazing in Apache for this model, I need to define the visible light transmittance within Radiance for this daylight simulation. Here in the Material Surface Properties section, I can scroll to find my external glazing, and by double-clicking on the external glazing, I can enter the visible light transmittance. To do so, I'll click on the button in the bottom left that converts transmittance to transmissivity, and enter the transmittance value for my glass. When I push Calculate, a transmissivity is calculated, and OK in these dialogues will apply that value. If I don't enter my own transmittance value, a value of 0.734 is used by default. Next, on the Sensor Settings tab, I want to turn on daylight sensors in my model. Since I haven't previously defined any sensors, the software will now perform that step for me. It will put daylight sensors in all of the zones in my model, and they will be placed in the ceiling pointed downwards towards the space. A daylight sensor has been placed in my roof, however it will be turned off because there are no windows, there is no glazing in that roof part of my project. I can view this clicking on the Summary tab to see all of my sensors. And there's that roof sensor grayed out and turned off. If I needed to move one of these daylight sensors, I can do so by selecting the space and going down a level of composition. From here, I can move my sensor in the X and Y direction by switching into plan view. Once in plan view, if I double right click on the location where I want the daylight sensor to be, I have the option to set the sensor position and move the daylight sensor into place. If I need to move my daylight sensor in the vertical direction, I'll switch to a vertical view, right, left, front, or back. From here, I can do the same double right click and change the sensor position. If I move below the center line of my space, I'll get a notification that it's going to change my daylight sensor from being mounted in the ceiling pointed downwards to being mounted in the working plane pointed upwards. And I can switch this back to the ceiling by selecting a location above that midline. With all five of my daylight sensors in place, I'm ready to run a simulation. To do so, I'll click on the Apache button here in the toolbar. And this will run a daylight simulation that writes a .ill file that can be read later by Apache. Now that my daylight simulation is complete, I'm ready to modify the artificial lighting that's already in the model so that it can dim in response to these daylight levels. To do so, I'm going to move to the Apache module in the software. Yes, I will save changes to my model. And by selecting the rooms where I have performed daylight harvesting, my five occupied zones, I can come into Apache tabular room data. And on the internal gains tab, I can see that currently I have 1.1 watt per square foot of artificial lighting in all of my spaces. These are on a variation profile which schedules how my lights change throughout the day, but my dimming profile is currently set to be on continuously, meaning that the lights in my room do not dim. I'm going to change this to one of the predefined profiles in the software called Daylight Dimming Continuous to 10% Light, 20% Minimum Power at 50 Foot Candles. And we'll take a look at this profile. So now that's in place, let's just take a look at what that profile does. So here in the Apache Profiles database, I can see it at the top of my list. And this is a formula profile. E1 is my daylight illuminance within the space, and this is a ramp function. So this says that at 5 foot candles or lower, 1.0, 100% of my artificial lights, my 1.1 watts per square foot in each of my spaces, will be on. 
Above 50 foot candles of daylight, only 20%, 0.2 of my artificial lights will be on. Between five and 50 foot candles, I'm going to see a proportional ramp between 100 and 20% of my artificial lighting. So let's simulate this and see what results we get. I'll click on my Apache Sim dynamic simulation button. Now I've previously run some results that didn't include the effects of daylight harvesting. That way we've got something to compare against. So I'm going to rename this simulation file, and most importantly, I'm going to tick on my Radiance link here. So this allows that Illuminance file that was written by Radiance to be read by Apache, which allows my lighting profile to see the daylight levels at those sensor locations and dim accordingly. I'll press Simulate, and for the month of March, we'll calculate what all of my gains and loads and energy use are in this building based on the inputs provided so far. Here in Vista Pro, I have two sets of results, those with daylight harvesting and those without. I'm going to start with my south zone, as I'm expecting to see the largest amount of daylighting impact there. And if I plot my lighting gain, let's see. I'm going to zoom in, I think, to the week of March 22nd. Looks like a good example. What I see here in red is the lighting gain without any daylight harvesting. So you can see it's consistent day to day. It's a scheduled lighting gain. In blue, I see my lighting gain in my, from my set of results where I do have daylight harvesting. So my artificial lights are responding to my daylight level. And I can see this is different on different days of the week. It looks like Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'm getting lots of daylight harvesting, but much less so on Monday and Tuesday. Monday is a great example since this changes throughout the day where we can confirm that what we're seeing on this graph is a result of daylight harvesting. I'm going to start by locking on these results so we can continue to take a look at some of our variables here. And if I start by adding the daylight illuminance on the graph, I can see, yes, in fact, there's my daylight illuminance levels in yellow. So early in the morning when I'm not seeing any effect of daylight harvesting, that's because I don't have daylight to harvest, and thus my artificial lights are turned all the way up. Later in the afternoon, I see these daylight levels come in in yellow, and therefore my artificial lighting drops as represented by that blue line. Now, why does my daylight illuminance change throughout the day? Well, if I plot my cloud cover from my weather file, there it is. Yep, as expected, it is very cloudy in the morning of March, Monday, March 22nd in this TMY weather file. And later in the day, as the cloud cover dissipates, I see that daylight level increase. And as a result, my artificial lighting decreases.